Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I'm doing a quick video. It is not during Winter is Coming Wednesday, but it is a Winter is Coming Wednesday special edition. It is the mail, the USPS postage edition. I am doing it early because I've been uh, conferring with various people that I craft with, and they all talk about mailing their Christmas cards early. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the day I've sent all of my Thanksgiving cards off. I went ahead and did a one artisan market event last weekend and sold a bunch of Christmas and Thanksgiving cards. So it's been a lot, bit of a frenzy to get cards ready to go. And I, now I get to work on the Christmas cards. So I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios for mailing for you. We're going to go over a skinny card. We're going to go over a thick card. I have already done a video earlier in July. The pricing changed pretty dramatically, I feel. And so I want to review what the postage is and what the options are as of the last time I was uh, out buying postage. I have not bought any since that time, which was soon in after the uh, pricing changed. So there might be more options for you, um, but I will go over all of that. So the first rule is greeting cards need to be a minimum of three and a half by five by 0 0.007 thick. None of us crafters are going to make a card that thin. So we don't have a problem with thickness there. Max size six is in one eighth mm -hmm. by 11 and a half by, um, a quarter inch thick. I actually wrote that down the wrong thickness. So that is the starting point. That is for a forever stamp. There's also the rule that it can't be lumpy or bumpy and it can't be rigid. So most of you are aware of that. So one of the sizes I wanted to investigate is the, the newly popular skinny card. These are envelopes uh, that Stampin' Up! sells, and I have this card. This is actually a project that I have not put together yet, but it has all of the pieces. It may have a knot somewhere on here uh, once it's all together, but I took all of the layers and I stuffed them all in. So basically this is a full sheet, I believe, of cardstock, or it's um, five by nine, I believe, not full size. Um, and so it's actually would be eight by nine. So then it's scored in the middle. It has a white layer that's going to be for writing on. It has a couple of decorative layers. Uh, this is the leaves of holly. And then it'll have some dots and some trim. So I wanted to show you that this without any dots or trim if I bring out my scale, and so I don't consider this an overly thick card, but it, because of its size, is telling me that it's 0.9 ounces. So you will have to watch as you add final embellishments to your skinny cards. If you use cardstock, you could opt for using, I use 110 pound um, white for my bases. This is the Stampin' Up's colored cardstock, which is about 80, 80 to 85 pound. And then you could put it on the white, the regular white, which is 65 pounds and get a little bit of weight off that will then transfer to using that weight with the trim and the embellishments like the bling pearls or rhinestones. So this again is four by nine. It does fit size-wise into the min and max. I did read somewhere, now some of this is very subjective because I can go into one post office and get one story, then go to another post office and get another. So, so you should do your own research. This just is at least me giving you the general guidance of what it should probably be. Uh, when you address your envelopes, they do talk about it has to go through a machine, so your stamp needs to be on the long skinny side in in most cases, because if you were to have a little bit different dimension and you thought it would be cool to go ahead and write your return address at the top 
and have your stamp over here, that could get you into trouble postage wise. So just be careful when you're working with a horizontal aligned card to put your stamps over on the, on the long skinny side. So that is the skinny card from what I can tell. At a minimum, if you don't uh, exceed the thickness and it is about a four by nine or smaller than a letter and it doesn't weigh over an ounce, you can get away with a forever stamp. So then I have the, I just wanted to show you, this is another skinny card project I have not finished. Here's all these fun bits and pieces. And this was, um, is one from my skinny card stash, just like that Christmas one. And this person put it in a regular letter envelope, which you are welcome to do. Here's how it looks. It is not too fat. It goes through the jig with all of those bits and pieces. Watch your trim. Let's check the weight though. So this one, it flickered at one. You do not want it to say anything over one. So again, I think in this case, if I were to do a skinny card, still of the four by nine, with a couple of layers and some die cuts in this case, I could still put on some, some trim, probably not a lot of, not a big fluffy bow or anything, and some pearls and it would be fine. So those are the skinny cards. I have now a card I want to talk about. It is a project that we made. I, I think I have it coming up um, in, in a future um, December for Christmas edition of Winter's Coming Wednesday. And so it is this wonderful belly band card that it has this wonderful fluffy bow that I made and it pops up 3D. So it has a lot going on. And this is supposed to be for a gift card. So I put this together and I, I have non Stampin' Up! envelopes and I have Stampin' Up! envelopes. And, you know, Stampin' Up! I think overall makes a really good product. Sometimes it's tempting to go with maybe a lesser expensive product. Uh, an easy place to maybe save some money is to do envelopes. So I have here just a regular... Um, envelope bought in bulk. Uh, it could be that this is one of my bulk ones here. I wanted, and I picked the very vanilla one so that I know for sure that it is the Stampin' Up! envelope. So what's interesting about these is they, they feel to be about the same size, but they actually are a smidge different in how they're constructed. And when I tried to take this fat, odd shaped, card and I tried to put it inside this envelope I had a very difficult time trying to get it just something about the way this card or this envelope is makes it very difficult it's like it gets tight right here at like the gussets I guess for lack of a better term so I gave up and I just dug around my pile because I'm getting everything set up and I have a whole bunch of envelopes here so here is a very vanilla it has a different gusset system. This is, a again, a Stampin' Up! envelope. And so when I try to put it in, it actually goes right in. Even though on the surface you, you compare them dimensionally, they are the same dimension, but for some reason the way this envelope is put together right here, maybe that's called the neck or the yoke. I don't know what the technical term is. But look, this was the only envelope I could get to fit this particular extra fat uh, special gift card. So with this particular one now tucked into an envelope that I finally found one that would fit, and it, yes, it is a Stampin' Up! one, I then took my jig, and if you have never made yourself a jig, I just took some paper pumpkin chipboard and I used a straight edge and I cut the one quarter inch. This is actually only a half an inch thick, but it can go, if you want to pay the upcharge, that might be an old upcharge by the way, because I don't often go beyond the thickness. I will work with my cards to make sure that they fit within the quarter inch. So here I am with this. It has that really thick bow. I can feel the knobbiness of the bow. And when I try to put it through, 
This is a chipboard, so it has a little give to it. So you have to say, all right, if I was the postmaster and I had a plastic jig, it would be rigid and it would not go through. So this particular card, now I'm going to check weight. So it already fails. Um, it does not fail for weight. It does not fail for the overall dimensions, which is a standard A2 size envelope. However, it it has it has some bumps. I see some feel some pearls, and this bow is too thick. If I want to not have to pay the three quarter inch extra upcharge for the thickness, I need to take this bow and make it thinner. So I would definitely go through your cards. I make my cards all individually throughout the year, as you know, so none of my cards are the same, which means I do have to do this process and mm -hmm. really make sure I know what I'm supposed to pay. Some people take a chance and they just throw on a regular forever stamp and let it go and see what happens, but I, I tend to not do that. And I would work on this bow. There's a lot of layers right here underneath this bow. Um, a possibility if you really wanted to use a bow this thick is perhaps put it up here in this corner and the belly band only comes off through the bottom. That would be one way to deal with it. Um, so be sure to check before you get too far along on all of your projects to make sure that it meets these different rules. So the third card I have, this one actually is one that was a swap that I went ahead and put on the bling. When I put the bling on, I had this rhinestone up here on the lollipop and I left one rhinestone on the lollipop because I want you to see what happens when I try to put it through the jig. So this is where it can also just be a matter of careful placement of your trim and embellishments. So this one, this again is a non Stampin' Up! envelope and it's just a little bit snug right in this yoke area. I don't know what it is um, so I'm going to have to, you guys are seeing me fuss with this a little bit. I have been finding these envelopes are just a little bit on the snug side. So if you don't want to deal with the snugness, I'm saying my, my Stampin' Up! envelopes don't have these weird little issues around the, the yoke, collar, neck, whatever you would call it. So when I close this one up, I can feel this lump right here. That's the one that's on the, the uh, lollipop. When I send it through, I feel, you can even see it, um, I can feel that it is a point of contention. And if I wanted to make 100% sure that this card would not get into trouble for not having a non-machinable stamp, all I have to do is take this rhinestone, make sure I pick up the sticky, and either take it off or move it somewhere else. Just move it to the lower layer. Move it right here and call it good. So again, make sure your bows aren't too thick and make sure your rhinestones aren't placed along the highest level of your card. And then you won't get into trouble for shipping. Another thing that I have found now, this card, I purposefully left my bow not loose. So you could even loosen it more to, to be then loosen it up enough to try to flatten it. But I've already done that to this particular uh, bow that has so many layers. I already left it loose and already tried to flatten it. It is just plain old too fat with all of the layers going on of the box below plus two. There's actually three layers of cardstock on the mm -hmm. belly band alone, not including the layers of the box. There's like six, six, seven layers altogether. Even the back has a layer of white. So that's one, two, three, four layers before you even get to the belly band. So that is indeed seven layers of cardstock. But again, I weighed it and weight wise, it wasn't in trouble. Even with the envelope, if we just toss the envelope on, it's 0.9. So tips for you, watch your trim, watch the thickness of your bows and also watch for your placement of your bling. Okay, so the next quick thing is to review. I have my cheat sheet. This has been updated for uh, before July. It had 88 cents, and then after July, we we went up quite a bit for a non-machinable, which is the lumpy bumpy card. So you cannot, you couldn't after July, still in the month of July, like toward the end of July, you could not buy a non-machinable 
stamp for 39 cents. They Maybe they've done, done it, but I don't think they've made them. So you can get a decorative forever for the holidays. Uh, I have um, some animals. I have the snow otters. You know, there's Santa type ones, all sorts of, of different forever 60 centers. And then I own the bunnies, the pears, and the grapes, and that's what I use to make 99 cents. Uh, there is the, the various famous people that are the one, the two ounce stamp, but this is actually a two ouncer is 84 cents. So you're still short if you choose to use one of the two ounce stamps, which I have some of. If you own a, a non-machinable, which I think right now you've got flowers or you've got butterflies. So there aren't any really Christmassy non-machinables. These are 99 cents. There's this beautiful purple butterfly, the yellow butterfly. And then, as I said, there's a floral non-machinable as well. So here's what the postage situation looks like. You feel free to post if you know of a 39 center that would be the non-machinable charge to do the lumpy bumpy cards. You can go ahead and put a comment here in this video so that we all know that there is indeed a non-machinable stamp for 39 cents so you don't have to mix three different stamps to get to the uh, surcharge of 39 cents making the total postage right now for sending lumpy bumpy cards at 99 cents. So I believe that's all I've got and I have one last card that I need to send uh, today. I was working on it because I was short a Thanksgiving. And so I do have a few more weeks of the winter is coming Wednesdays, actually two more weeks, I believe. And then I am not gonna do a postage edition because I was told to do this early. So I this will be the one postage episode that is outside of the winter is coming Wednesdays, but I will put it in the numbering system and I will put it in my playlist for you guys to be able to see. And then before I go, I just want to, this is a project that I made in card class. I believe this was, uh, her name is Beth. I don't have her last name handy, but this is just a very pretty way to make the, um, make a holiday, um, a Thanksgiving theme. Uh, and I won't open the inside because I already wrote on the inside of this. And I will have the supplies list for this particular card on the blog with all of the supplies. I don't think I'm gonna put any of the other supplies of the, like the sample cards because I've already done individual episodes for those. But all of the supplies used here, we went ahead and colored with the watercolor pencils. I did it dry. And uh, that was what was instructed in the class. We did we did a dry application and I love how it turned out. I even did some orange on the leaves as well as Wink of Stella, which sadly I may or may not get in the light. Oh, I think you can see it. So I Wink of stella the veins and I thought that came out really pretty. And I thought the heaven and nature seeing that she didn't have any Thanksgiving messages. So inside I have my thanks, my happy Thanksgiving sentiment from Painted Pheasant as well as a little message. And then you'll see I decorated the inside of the card like this as well as the uh, outside of the envelope, which is very vanilla and matches the very vanilla paper. And that's all I've got. So leaving your questions, comments, or concerns on this video or over on my blog, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.